Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about using reference angles to evaluate trig functions of any angle. I have to emphasize it's really important to know this stuff. That's why there's a lot on the board here. Know your special right triangles. Know so kato, okay? Even knowing this is very important, all right? ASTC, all students take college algebra. To begin, I'm going to define what a reference angle is. And throughout this uh, video, I'm always going to refer to reference angle as the Greek letter alpha, all right? That's alpha. All right. So what is a reference angle? Reference angle is a positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of an angle theta and the x-axis, okay? So it'd be that little angle right in there. So it's the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of an angle theta and the x-axis. So it's right in there. And in this sketch right here, angle formed by the terminal side of an angle theta and the x-axis. So reference angle, it's always positive, it's always acute, meaning it's less than 90. And I'll use this Greek letter alpha to refer to it throughout this whole video. Okay, let's get started. Uh, well, first of all, let's just make sure you can find some reference angles. So let's say the reference angle was 120 degrees, or excuse me, the, let's say the angle theta was 120 degrees. To find a reference angle, that'd be an angle in second quadrant. So if theta was 120, 180 minus 120, reference angle 60 degrees. Or let's say the angle was 225 degrees. All right, that'd be an angle in quadrant three. Take 225, subtract 180, your reference angle is 45 degrees. Or lastly, let's say the angle theta was 330 degrees. Your reference angle would be 360 minus 330, which is 30 degrees. So it's funny, when it's ever in quadrant two or quadrant three, you're always using 180. When the angle's line in quadrant four, you use 360. And if you mix these up, you can just put absolute value bars around it. All right, just take the absolute value of 180 minus that, that theta, and you always find out what it is for the reference angle, because it's always positive. All right, let's start with the problem. Let's evaluate the cosine of 5 pi over 6. All right. Well, first, 5 pi over 6, where is that angle? Well, pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So 5 times 30 degrees is 150 degrees, which means it's in quadrant 2. Less than 180. So I'm going to make a sketch. Once again, if you just knew this, you know it's right there. Right, so it's important to know this stuff. I'm gonna make a sketch. Angle, standard position. All right, rotates 150 degrees, and it lands right there in quadrant two. This is theta five pi over six, which is 150 degrees. So what's this reference angle? We're gonna find it. 180 minus 150 means the reference angle right in there is 30 degrees. So there's alpha. Oop. Now check this out. I'm going to build a little right triangle over here. Just drop a line right here. Whoop. There's the right triangle. And then when you can notice that that's 90, this is 30, I mean that angle up there is 60 degrees. I can put a little 60 up here. I can squeeze it in 60 degrees. And so I can use these ratios here. Make sure I put the 1 opposite the 30 degrees. So this would be 1 over here. This will be the square root of 3. This will be the 2. And uh oh, I went negative in the x, y coordinate plane. So actually, if a point was landed right here on the terminal side of this angle, all right, x would be negative, the y would be positive. That r value, which is the distance from the origin to that point, is always positive. So now with this nice sketch, using that cool reference angle, I can evaluate this. Remember, by the definitions, cosine of 5 pi over 6, it's x over r. And you can see that x is negative square root of 3. And the r value is 2. All right, for this point right here. This point here, which is x equal to negative square root of 3, y equal to 1. All right, and that gave us the final answer. And there it is. I'm going to put a box around it. There's the solution. Uh, but that was a lot. So let's talk about quicker ways to do this. In fact, let's talk about ways to evaluate these using a reference angle without even making a sketch. 
Right? Just knowing two things. The reference angle and what quadrant the angle is lying in. In terms of its terminal sign. Alright? Because you'll notice something at the end. This answer right here. It was the same as the cosine of pi over 6. Yeah. It was just negative. Alright? It was the same value, square root of 3 over 2, same as the cosine of this 30 degrees here, this pi over 6, this square root of 3 over 2. It was just negative. So the key is, let's just be able to evaluate the trig function of that reference angle. Number one. Number two, as long as we know what quadrant it is, with ASTC, all students take college algebra with that, we can know whether, pre whether to prefix that sign with a positive or negative symbol. So I'll show you. Let's do a few of these, but this time we'll make a sketch. We'll do it in a two-step method. All right? And remember, step one is going to be this. Find that reference angle. And after you evaluate the reference angle, or excuse me, after you find that reference angle, we're going to evaluate the trig function of it. And then step two, what quadrant is the angle lying in? I'm talking about A, S, T, C. That way we know what sign to prefix the trig function with, a positive or a negative. All right. So we're going to find the reference angle, evaluate the trig function with it, and we're going to put a plus or minus sign on it. All right. Here's my next one. How about let's find the sine of 7 pi over 6. All right. What to start with? Let's find this reference angle. Well, 7 times pi over 6, that's 7 times 30. 7 times 30 is 210 degrees. We know this is 180 degrees. 210 would put it right there. And to figure it out, we've got to go 210 minus 180 to get the reference angle 30. All right? 30 degrees is pi over 6. But hold up. You know what's interesting? Just hide that 7 there. Hide that 7. Get out of the way. You see the pi over 6? That's what the reference angle is. Yeah, it's 30 degrees. So there's quicker ways to find this reference angle if we know this stuff. Huh? 11 pi over 6, the reference angle is going to be pi over 6. 7 pi over 4, the reference angle will be pi over 4. 4 pi over 3, the reference angle will be pi over 3. So use that to your advantage. Alright, so anyways, the reference angle for this problem is pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the sine of pi over 6 in step 1. Sine of pi over 6, we need our special right triangle here, that's 30 degrees, opposite of right hypotenuse. I get a half. Alright, now, step 2. What quadrant is angle 7 pi over 6 line in? Quadrant 3. ASTC, only tangent and reciprocal buddy cotangent are positive when angle lies in quadrant 3. So this is going to be negative. So the final answer is going to be negative sine of pi over 6, which is going to make this a negative 1 half. So therefore, sine of 7 pi over 6 is a negative 1 half. All right? Let's get yeah. Just use these. Evaluate the trig function, step one, knowing that reference angle. Then step two, the quadrant, ASTC. We're going to put a positive or a negative on it. Let's try another one. Uh, let's see. How about the tangent of 225 degrees? All right. What's the reference angle? Okay, 221, well, this is 180, so 225, it must be in quadrant 3, 225 minus 180 gives you an angle, reference angle of 45 degrees. So the reference angle is 45 degrees. Now evaluate the trig function of 45 degrees. What's the tangent of 45 degrees? Huh. Opposite over adjacent, using that special right triangle there, 1 over 1 is 1. Now step 2. What quadrant is 225 degrees in? It's in quadrant 3. ASTC. Tangent's positive there. So we're saying this result will be the positive value. Not negative. It'll just be positive. So yeah, you're like, it's just going to be the tangent of 45. Okay? Which is 1. So tangent 225 degrees, it's not negative 1. It's a positive 1. Okay? A few more. Notice we're not even making a sketch. Isn't this great? Alright. 
How about the cosine of 5 pi over 3? What's the reference angle? Alright. What do you think? Hide that 5. Get that 5 out of the way. Is the reference angle be pi over 3? You bet. You bet. See, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. 5 times 60 is 300. Which we put over here, and 360 minus 300 gives you that reference angle right there, 60 degrees. All right, so that's the reference angle. So we're going to start out with just evaluating the cosine of pi over 3. Well, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So we're going to do adjacent over hypotenuse. I get 1 half. Step 1 is complete. Step 2, what quadrant is 5 pi over 3 lying in? Well, it's in quadrant 3. Uh, excuse me, quadrant 4, where cosine is positive. So we'll prefix this with a positive means we don't even have to write it. I'm doing this for emphasis. So it's going to be positive cosine pi over 3, not negative. All right? Which will just keep it 1 half. So the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is 1 half. And what would be the secant of 5 pi over 3? Just a reciprocal of this. 2 over 1. 2. All right? One more. Let's do one more. Um, how about, let's find the sine of 11 pi over 6. The sine of 11 pi over 6. Okay. What's the reference angle? 11 pi over 6? You bet it's pi over 6. Yeah. Here's 11 pi over 6. That little angle right in there would be pi over 6, 30 degrees. Okay. The reference angle is pi over 6. So in step 1, we're going to evaluate what is the sine of just pi over 6? We'll get that ratio and then we'll decide whether we have to put a positive or negative on it. Step 2. Sine of pi over 6. Let's go to the special white triangle. It's 30 degrees. Opposite over hypotenuse of 30 degrees, 1 half. Now in step 2. This angle is 11 pi over 6 is lying in quadrant 4. Where only cosine and reciprocal body secant are positive, so this is going to be negative. Our answer will be negative sine pi over 6, which is negative 1 half. Okay? The sine of 11 pi over 6 is the same as negative sine of pi over 6. So it will be negative 1 half, not positive 1 half. Okay? So, in summary, it's important to know this two-step method. Be able to find that reference angle, evaluate the trig function of that reference angle. So you get that ratio, you know, like 1 over 2 or square root of 3 over 2, 1 over square root of 2, etc. And then step two, use ASTC. All students take college algebra to figure out whether it's a positive or negative prefix to that so you can come up with a solution. All right? And once again, it's important to know this stuff. All right, so make sure you know it. That's it.